tutorial, we're going to learn to make the sweater that I am wearing right now. We'll give you a picture on screen as well. This tutorial is a free pattern, free tutorial brought to you by Lion Brand Yarns. It is sized from small to 2XL, and if you'd like to get your free copy of the pattern to follow along, I'll give you a link here on screen to take you to my website where I have a bit more information and a link to the Lion Brand website where you can get your pattern. Um, this sweater is knit with Wool Ease yarn. It's actually not the yarn the pattern calls for, but we're going to substitute Woolies. This is a great yarn. I've used it for several tutorials in the past. It is uh, a wool and synthetic blend, but it feels like wool, and it's super easy to care for. It's actually machine washable and dryable. It comes in a lot of colors. I don't recommend putting your hand knits in the dryer unless it's a blanket or something, but if it does, if your finished sweater does end up in the dryer, it's not going to be ruined, which is good. So um, uh, this yarn is widely available. That's one reason I like to use this in tutorials, because you can find it almost anywhere. And I'll give you a link on my website, too, where you can find a Lion Brand retailer near you. It's also a very good value. To knit the sweater, um, I would put this at about an advanced beginner level. This tutorial won't teach you how to knit. You need to know how to both knit and purl, and if you're confident with those two things, this tutorial should work for you, because um, I'll walk you through all the rest of the tricky parts. To knit this, you will need, um, the pattern says 29-inch circular needles. Um, if you have 32-inch circular needles, that's fine. That's what I use to knit my sweater. And uh, you'll need it in two sizes. And the pattern lists two sizes, but we're going to talk about checking gauge that you might need to adjust your size a little bit, but we'll talk about that in just a moment. Um, you'll also need four stitch markers and a tapestry needle, a blunt end needle to weave in the ends. So if you get your yarn, your Woolies yarn, and your free copy of the pattern, in the next segment we're going to talk about swatching and casting on. Okay, if you've got your yarn and your needles and your free copy of the pattern, you're ready to go. But before you get excited and cast on for the sweater, it's important that you knit a gauge swatch. And this is an example of a gauge swatch that I knit for the sweater that I'm wearing. Um, I'll give you instructions for exactly how I did this gauge swatch with the garter stitch border, if you'd like to do one like this. The, it's not necessary to make a garter stitch border, but since the gauge swatch is in stockinette stitch, it can curl on the sides, and so the garter stitch border helps it lie flat. I just think it's pretty, so I always knit my gauge swatches like this. I knit this using the larger of the two needle sizes, which the gauge is in the larger of the two needle sizes, and then I treated the swatch just like I was going to treat my finished sweater. I put it in the washing machine uh, on gentle, and then um, I let it, the water spin out, the normal washing machine cycle, and then I set it out flat to dry because uh, even though this yarn can be machine dried, I know that I won't machine dry my sweater just uh, to help it last longer and look better longer. Um, and then after that was done, I took a ruler and I measured the number of stitches per inch that I'm getting. And it just so happened that my uh, gauge was right on, right from the start on my first try. But if I was getting too many stitches per inch, then I would need to go down a needle size to make the stitches bigger. I'm, I'm sorry, go, let me start over because this gets so twisted up in my own head. <laughs> it's good for me to get this straight. If you are getting too many stitches per inch, you need to go up a needle size so your stitches are bigger, so there are fewer of them per inch. If you are getting too few stitches per inch, you need to go down a needle size to make your stitches smaller so you get more of them per inch. And uh, I can't stress how important the gauge swatch is because even if you are one stitch off over four inches around the entire uh, circumference of the sweater, that's going to make a huge difference and your sweater is going to be a really different size than the one that you're after. I hear from people all the time saying that, no, oh, I don't bother gauge swatching, it always turns out fine. But do you really want to put 30, 40, 50 hours into a sweater and then not have it be just right? I think it's pretty important, it's only um, a few minutes to knit a gauge swatch and it is totally worthwhile. Okay, that is my, <laughs> I'll get off my soapbox now about gauge swatching. Really, for a successful sweater, this is important. Okay, so you have two needle sizes that you're working with because all of the ribbing in the sweater is done in a slightly smaller needle size and that's just to make the ribbing 
um, kind of scrunch in a little bit more than the rest of the sweater, and that's it's a nice feature. We, um, we're going to go ahead and take a look at what I have here in getting started with the sweater. Let's see. I have my needles and my 32 inch cord, and I have part of the cast on done. I'm going to show you exactly what I'm doing here. I am working on, um, I'm making a much smaller sweater so that it will fit here easily on camera and I can show you the techniques pretty quickly. I'm using the long tail cast on. This is the exact same as the slingshot cast on if you're familiar with that. But I'll give you a link here to how I'm doing this cast on. Okay, I'm not sure if that's the correct number but that's okay. And oh, well let me show you this one thing. You need to know how much yarn to leave for your cast on. You can um, do this and wrap the yarn around the needle and each wrap is just, is just long enough um, with a little bit extra for you to cast on a lot of stitches like you'll need for this. So um, you, you can wrap the yarn 25 times and multiply that but to close to the number that you have that you need for your cast on for your size. I have some extra yarn here so I am just going to go ahead and break that. Okay. Now I'm on my smaller needles and the first part of the pattern has me working in knit two, purl two rib. And this is just a finer point that I'm going to bring up. This is what I consider to be the wrong side of the cast on. It has purl bumps on it and this is what I consider to be the right side of the cast on. I want the right side of the cast on to be, um, I want the pretty side of the cast on to be the right side of my sweater. So on this very first row after the cast on, I'm going to start with purl two so that I have knit two on the other side. Don't overthink this. It doesn't make that much of a difference. It's just one of the, one of the finer points. So starting with purl two on this side, working in knit two, purl two rib, I'm ready to go to knit two now. So I pull the yarn back between the two needles and work knit two. Pull the yarn forward between the two needles to work purl two. And again, for this pattern, it is important that you know how to work both knits and purls. I'm just showing you how to work those together. Yarn back to knit two. Yarn forward to purl two. And then you're going to um, work this all the way across. You'll turn your work and staying in pattern, you'll start with uh, knit two on the next row after you turn your work. You keep working this for a couple of inches. Because this is knit top down, this is our collar. And after you knit a couple of inches, you'll need to increase by um, either two, four, or six stitches, I think it is, depending on your size. I'm ending up, I did not pay attention to my cast on number. I should end with purl two, but I'm just ending with purl one. You'll continue that ribbing in the smaller size needle for two inches, like I said, and then on the last row, the last wrong side row, where your um, cast on has the pearl bumps on it, you're going to need to do the increase that I mentioned. And you can do any increase. It really uh, isn't going to show between the ribbing and the stockinette part of the body. You can do KFB, knit front back. You can do make one, whatever increase you like. And the pattern says to space it evenly across the row. Don't get too caught up in you know counting 10 and putting one and count. If they're just there and they're not right next to each other, no one's going to know. It's going to work out fine. Then after you work, work that last wrong side row in the ribbing where you included um, the number of increase the pattern calls for in your size, you're going to want to pick up your larger needle because as we move forward with the raglan increases, the stockinette part of the sweater is knit with the larger size needle. And that's what we're going to do next.
Once you have your ribbed collar finish and you work the two increases, I think I said decreases in the last video, but it's two are, are the number of increases you need to work for your size to get you up to the right number. We're ready to start on the body of the sweater and the raglan increases, which is like most of the sweater is done this way. The raglan, the top-down raglan style makes it really easy to um, to knit and to size properly and to work the sleeves and the body all at the same time. And um, let's go ahead and take a look because we're ready to get started with that. I am working with a tiny little sample here so I can get through the steps um, quickly. Your rib collar is going to be bigger than this, even in the smallest size. So this is row one of shape body. You're going to knit the number of stitches the pattern tells you to for your size. We're just in plain knitting now. And this round, we're going to place our stitch markers, which will be important for um, the rest of the body up to the sleeves. You're going to yarn, yarn over, which means pulling the yarn forward between the two needles and um, then knit the next stitch. And the yarn over is an increase and it leaves a hole under your work and that is A-OK -okay because these uh, holes are going to be decorative and the raglan increases as they move along. Then you're going to take a stitch marker and put it on the right needle. This is the setup round really. And yarn over again and then knit the number. The pattern tells you to. And then we're going to do the same thing at the next at the next spot, yarn over, knit one, put a marker on the right needle, yarn over, and knit up to the next one. My numbers are uh, uh, the numbers for this tiny little sweater that I'm using for demonstration is half the numbers used in the smallest size, if you're curious. I'm ready to place my next one. Yarn over, knit one, marker, yarn over, and knit up to the next spot. And then the last one. Yarn over, knit one, place marker, yarn over, and knit to end. So now that those markers are in place, they're going to be our guideline for most of the sweater knitting from this point. And if you've never knit a top-down raglan sweater before, it works out so cool. This is um, going to be the front of the sweater, actually the left front. This is the left sleeve. This is the back, this is the right sleeve, and this is the right front. It's crazy how it works, but it does, um, as long as you do the increases at the marker, it ends up just shaping itself so it fits correctly over shoulders and makes the front of the sweater. Um, and we'll see how that works out here in a moment. Then row two and all the other wrong side rows are just purling across. And if you'll be patient with me here, I'm going to work this so I can show you um, a right side row with the markers placed. You see here I'm coming up to a yarn over and it's just, uh, it's not even a real loop on the needle, it's just kind of laying over the needle. But I treat that like a normal stitch and purl into it.
Okay. Now, this is row three. And pretty much every raglan increase from here on out, this is what it's going to look like. You're going to knit up to one stitch before the marker. Okay, so there I have one stitch and then the marker. I'll yarn over, knit one, slip the marker, yarn over, and then knit up to one stitch before the next marker. There I am, one stitch before the marker, yarn over, knit one, slip the marker, yarn over, and knit up to the next one. It actually doesn't include slip marker, which is abbreviated SM. It doesn't include that in your pattern. So you might just want to take a pen and write yarn over, knit one, slip marker, yarn over, so that you know you have a quick visual for exactly what you need to do when you come to a marker. Yarn over, knit one, slip marker, yarn over. After you work on this sweater for a while, you'll be able to do that in your sleep. Yarn over, knit one, slip marker, yarn over. And then, of course, when you turn your work, all the wrong side rows are just purling across. Now you'll keep doing that for the number of times the pattern tells you to for your size, and you'll end up with something that looks like this. We have a, look at how beautiful the raglan increases look when they start lining up. My ribbed collar, um, my raglan, uh, my uh, front of the sweater and the sleeve and the raglan increases between them. Here is my stitch marker. You're going to, um, it's easy to tell how many you've done. You know, the pattern might tell you that you need to continue working these a total of 24 times. Just count the holes. Each one of these holes is one increase round. Just a little tip, it makes it easy to keep track. Now when you get to this point, you can actually try the sweater on to make sure that it's going to fit. Here's a tapestry needle. You take a piece of yarn in a contrasting color and you can slide all of the stitches onto the scrap yarn, a very long piece of scrap yarn, just through the markers and everything else all the way around, and then try the sweater on. And if you can make the two points, um, if, if it feels, if you put these two points together under your arm, because this is the front and this is the sleeve, and these match up under your arm comfortably, then um, it, it's going to be a good fit. If it feels like it's tight under your arm, you can work a few more raglan increases to make it a bit bigger. Or if it feels like you've gone too far, you can rip back a little bit. Hopefully that didn't happen. Um, so yeah, just match these up under your arm. You might need some help to try to keep all the pieces together while you're doing that. And then slide the needle back into the stitches that you held on the scrap yarn. And then we're ready to separate the sleeves. And raglan sweaters are so cool this way. So we are going to leave the sleeves in reserve and just knit the rest of the body and then go back and knit the sleeves later. And this is how this is going to work. Once you have the exact size you want and you're ready to go, you'll knit up to the um, two stitches before the marker. And of course, this is all spelled out clearly in the pattern. I'm just showing you the technique here. Okay, two stitches before the marker. I'm actually going to bind off this stitch, this stitch, and the one after the marker. So I knit one, pull that stitch over to bind off one, knit another, pull that stitch over to bind off two, remove the marker, knit one, pull that stitch over to bind off three, 
And now I'm going to knit across the sleeve stitches. This will all make sense in a moment. It seems like a crazy thing to do right now. And top-down raglan sweaters are pretty much all work the same way, but you'll see different techniques used in this part. And this is, this is kind of a unique one here. Okay, we're two stitches before the marker now. I'll knit one to bind off that yarn over, knit one to bind off that knit stitch, remove the marker, and knit one to bind off that stitch. Okay, now um, I think the pattern actually tells you to transfer the sleeve stitches before you do the second group of bind off. Do the second group of bind off and slide that stitch over to the left needle. Now we're going to put the sleeve stitches on scrap yarn. So I have my tapestry needle threaded with a contrasting color of yarn and because I'm right-handed I'm going to turn the work because I would rather have this in my right hand. Once I turn the work all the stitches on the left needle are my sleeve stitches. I'm just going to slide those over to the tapestry needle. And then once those sleeve stitches are on there, we're just going to forget about them for a while. We'll come back and knit those later. Slide this stitch that you slipped over back to the right needle. Your working yarn is coming from that stitch, so it belongs on the right needle. And then knit up to the neck or two stitches before the next marker. And once you get two stitches before the next marker, you're going to do the exact same thing we did before, which is bind off this one, bind off this one, remove the marker, bind off this one, and then work across the last marker, do the same bind off thing, and then turn your work, and, or yeah, turn your work if you're right-handed, and put all of these stitches back onto a piece of scrap yarn, and then knit across the rest. And when you come to working the next row, you'll have these crazy gaps where the sleeves used to be. You're going to um, end up working this together. Just work across this row like there's no gap. It'll be a purl row. Work across this row like there's no gap and these things, um, these two stitches will be uh, attached and next to each other from there on out. Okay, that was like the biggest part of knitting this sweater is the raglan increases um, and separating the sleeves. So in the next video, we're going to talk about knitting the sleeves. After you've separated the sleeves, you're going to knit the body for as long as you want. And uh, this is a cropped sweater, but it doesn't have to be cropped. You can actually make it as long as you want. I added a little bit of length to mine because I'm almost six feet tall and a little bit longer would fit me better. And then you're going to switch to the smaller needles to knit the bottom ribbing. The only thing to keep in mind, like when I knit my body, the body of my sweater a little bit longer, is that it took a little bit more yarn than, than the pattern calls for. But I bought an extra hank just, uh, just in case and I had plenty of yarn and then I knit the bottom border just as the pattern uh, called for it. And that's how I ended up with this one. So let's go ahead and take a look because we are ready to knit a sleeve. Okay, here's the tiny little sweater. Again, this is not a baby sweater. It is not proportioned for a baby because the sleeves are way too small. It is just half the number of, all, half of all the numbers of the smallest size sweater in the pattern. And I, um, it makes it easy to demonstrate on something small like this. So this is a finished sleeve over here, and this is one that still has the stitches reserved on scrap yarn. 
this is how we're going to do this. Take your needle, your smaller needle, and slide it in with the scrap yarn all the way around. And these are knit flat, and then they have a tiny seam in them, which we'll cover here in just a moment. Okay, this last stitch is kind of hidden in there. I'm going to grab the scrap yarn in both ends and pop that stitch out so I can get to it. Okay, now I can, I, I actually tied a knot in my scrap yarn just so I wouldn't have to worry about anything. Wouldn't have to worry about sliding out. I have a snag somewhere, which happens sometimes. Usually the scrap yarn just slides out, but if there's a little snag, it will catch. There it was. There was a split piece of yarn in there, but I found it. Okay. So my needle is back in to the sleeve stitches, and it's important that you, you use a circular needle here even though we're, um, we're knitting this flat because there's a lot of curve to this right here. So I take my yarn. And with the right side of the work facing me, I'll put my needle into that first stitch, and I'm going to flop the yarn over on my finger like this, just to make a loop here. Put that loop on the back needle and pull it through. Now the yarn's attached. I'll knit a second one, and just like we've done with all the borders, we're going to work knit two, purl two. And that is really it for this, for the sleeve. I added a little bit of length to my sleeve by starting out with the larger needle and knitting a knit row, a purl row, a knit row, a purl row. I'm looking down at my sweater. I must have done that for a couple of inches to get the sleeve length that I have, and then I switched to the smaller needle. But the pattern has you go straight into the knit two, purl two. But you can make the sleeves as long as you like. And then you'll turn your work and just work the knit two, purl two. And after you get it as long as you like or as long as the pattern says, you can bind off and that is a sleeve finished. Now here I have a finished sleeve. I did not add any stockinette to this one. This one I just started straight out with knit two, purl two. And I have a couple of ends here. This is open here, and if I, uh, when I bind off the sleeve, if I think ahead, I can leave a longer strand after I break the yarn so that I have enough yarn to seam with. But I didn't really do that. So, I mean, I have a nice length here, but it's not quite long enough to knit that seam. So I'll show you how to do this with, um, another piece of yarn and uh, on your tapestry needle. I'm going to get myself into position here to seam this up. I'll start at the, the bottom of the ribbing. I'm going to go into the very corner, pull it through, leaving myself a little bit of a tail, and go through that same hole again. Now that's fastened. And then I'll go into the hole, go into the very corner here and now the two sides are connected. And the goal here is to pick up, with the right side facing you, pick up 
from over here, over here, over here, over here, back and forth from left to right, and then we'll tighten it all up and it should look really good. You want to unroll this first side so you see the very edge column of stitches. And between the column, the first column and the second column, there are these ladders. And you reach in there and put your needle under two ladders, two ladder rungs, I suppose. Same thing over here, roll to the very edge. And between the first column and the second column, there are ladder rungs. And then you go into the same hole you came out of, jumping back over here, and grab two ladder rungs. And go into the same hole you came out of and grab two ladder rungs. You see, I haven't tightened it up yet, and there's a reason for that. You just keep jumping back and forth. This is called the mattress stitch, and it leaves a seam on the inside of the work, but it looks perfect on the outside of the work. Now, I have a little bit there. I'm going to go ahead and tighten it up now. And you can really yank on it. It's fine. And then stretch it back out again. And you see what I have here. Um, because we started with knit two and ended with knit two, and uh, a seam of knit stitches from each side got eaten in the seam, the rib is unbroken. It looks so perfect. And then, of course, I would continue up um, using the mattress stitch all the way up. Things get a little bit different when you come to where the yarn overs were, but just keep working the same thing from each side. And you can even work it down a little bit into where we, um, into the beginning of the body to make sure that's tightened up and not a hole. And whatever you have, if you do end up with a little hole here under the arm, you can um, just use the end to just tighten up whatever looks loose uh, because holes under the arms do happen in raglan sweaters. Just kind of the way it goes, but we can always weave in an end and close it up. You'll want to knit and seam up both of the sleeves, and the very last bit of knitting we have to do is the front button band with no buttons in it. You are so close to being finished with this sweater. The last thing we have to do is the front button bands, or the front bands. They, they're called button bands on sweaters, even if they don't have buttons on them. Um, this sweater does not have buttons. If you want to modify yours to ha have buttons, um, I can give you a link here to my video on how to make a buttonhole. I personally think the sweater looks better hanging open for the kind of sweater that it is. Um, I'm going to assume, the, well, the pattern tells you exactly how many uh, stitches to pick up for the front button band, but we are going to assume that you have just knit the sweater exactly as long as you want and maybe you added an extra inch or something. So then we're going to ignore the number that the pattern tells you to pick up for the button band because this is a lesson that you can take on for a lot of different sweaters that you knit. Pretty much every button band that you're going to pick up and knit or really any any time you're going to pick up, pick up uh, horizontal stitches from vertical knitting. Um, it'll make sen more sense once I show you. Let's take a look. Here's my tiny sweater again. And the front button bands are here and here. And because we are attaching knitting going this direction to knitting going this direction, you can't just pick up and knit one for one. And so I'm going to show you a formula for picking up and knitting that works on just about everything. I think it's kind of ideal. This technique, like I said, is called pick up and knit. You're going to want to do this with your smaller needle size. You're going to want to start with the right side of the work facing you. And start by putting your needle into the very edge stitch, as close to the edge as you can possibly get. Because up here around the neckline, we want it to be as smooth and straight as possible. Then take your yarn and kind of flop it over and put that loop on the needle and pull it through. Basically what we're doing is we're knitting with just one needle right now. And then when you look at your work, you'll see that th these edge stitches are a series of V's. And even if they're not super clear, they're there and you can see them. Um, just get yourself into some good light, put on your glasses, whatever it takes, you'll see them. And you want to go under both legs of the V with your needle. 
so we have a good strong pickup. So I picked up that edge stitch. I'm going to put my needle under both legs of the V, wrap it and pull it through on the next stitch. Do it on the next, did I miss one there? I, I did not. The next stitch. So I have three stitches picked up here. The amazing formula that I'm sharing with you is pick up three, skip one, pick up three, skip one. It ends up working out for just about everything you knit, but if you notice that it's not working out, you can always just start over again with different numbers. So I picked up three, I'll skip the next one, pick up and knit one, two, three, skip the next one, skip the next one, skip the next one. Now the most important thing when you're picking up and knitting is that you want to make sure that you um, don't ever pick up further into the work or um, go pick up less than two legs of the V as you're doing this. Now you can see here, uh, this is my edge right here and everything looks really even. I haven't strayed from where I'm trying to pick up. It looks really good. If I did pick up too far, I'm gonna do that for a few stitches. I will intentionally mess up for a few stitches. This is the edge that I was following first, and it disappeared because I, I um, picked up further into the work and it messed up my perfect line. I'll take those three stitches out. So you'll pick up and knit all the way across, and really what you want to aim for is a multiple of, of two and not a multiple of four. You want to start with two knit stitches and end with two knit stitches, which is going to look nicer than starting and ending with purl stitches or having purl stitches on either side. So it's a multiple of four plus two. And what you'll do is just get kind of close to where you're almost at the end, count your stitches, and then space them out as necessary to get yourself to a multiple of four plus two. And this again is just one of the finer points of knitting. It's not your sweater's not going to be a failure if it doesn't work out that way, but it does end up looking nicer. You'll pick up all these stitches and then turn your work and starting in two by two rib with purl two, then knit two, purl two, knit two, all the way across and you should end with purl two if you've picked up a multiple of four plus two. Wow, that is everything. You're of course going to knit a button band on each side and then when the sweater is completely finished, you'll bind off and um, you'll weave in all of your ends. The last thing you want to do is to wash and block it. And I'll tell you the way that I did that is I, I washed the sweater on gentle with a little bit of wool soap in the washing machine, let it spin out so it was almost dry really after it finished spinning and I set it out flat to dry and because uh, the stitches end up being kind of lumpy and bumpy right after you finish knitting it, but blocking really takes care of this. Set it out flat to dry and patted it out and, and squared out the corners and um, made everything look good. It dried, the Woolies yarn dries in almost no time. And here I am, I have my finished sweater, it was that easy. That's everything you need. Um, good luck on the sweater and many thanks to Lion Brand for bringing us this free pattern. Good luck. Yeah.